Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Alright, well, chaps, boys and girls, it's about time we made a video, isn't it? Alright, I'll stop talking like, um, I don't know what. Anyway, like I was saying, I think it's about time we made a video, isn't it? Let me just open the blinds so you can see this all a little better. Because here in the UK it's nothing but sun all the time, so I might as well use it. But anyway, I want to make a few changes to my home audio setup. So what I want to do, as you can see from this plan here, is I want to take my most used audio stuff and sort of interconnect it all together. So, I'll just walk you through the parts here, so... Got my computer, rather angry looking computer, my homemade tape recorder, then a much better tape recorder, and of course headphones, speakers, and the stuff that's needed to put it all together. You may have noticed that the computer has two line outputs. That's not a mistake, that's actually how it is. You see, there's one line output that has automatic level on it, and there's one line output that doesn't. And the reason for that is, if I'm watching things like YouTube videos and the levels are all over the place, I'm not constantly reaching for the volume control. And this one that does not have automatic levels is useful for when I'm doing my music. Because, you know, I don't want it amplifying the quiet parts and bringing down the loud parts. Because that can really throw you off when you're trying to mix. Speaking of mixing, those both go into this stereo mixer, which is this contraption you saw in an earlier video. Then the output from that goes into these headphones, into an amplifier, and the speakers. Now, on this side of things, I've got my homemade tape recorder, which is connected to an amplifier and a speaker. And I've also made this mono mixer, which I didn't make a video of, but I will do a schematic of that. It's basically going to take the sound from the computer, and the sound from this microphone, mix them together, and then send that into the computer's microphone input through this attenuator here. It's going to send the sound into the camera's microphone input through another attenuator, which you can see here. And this is what you're actually listening to right now. And that's also going to go into the line input of my homemade tape recorder. This tape recorder, however, is not connected to anything at the moment. So what I want to do here is split this here so it doesn't just go into this mixer, but it also goes into this tape recorder's line in. And then from the line out of this tape recorder, it goes into this little dynamic noise reduction circuit. Then another attenuator, and into the computer's line input. Also, I can use this as a switch so I can switch in some other device if I wish to. Now, the more eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that on some of these I've drawn two wires to connect and some of them I've just drawn one wire to connect. Well, that's because some of these things are stereo and some of these things are mono. So, two wires means stereo and one wire means mono. You may have noticed that there is only one wire and one speaker here. Now, the thing is, at the moment I'm using a stereo amplifier, you know, a homemade amplifier to amplify the computer sound and send it into speakers. But the thing is, because of where the speakers are placed, it sounds like there's more sound coming out the left speaker than there is coming out the right. Even if I turn the left speaker completely off, it still sounds like there's sound coming out of that speaker. Only when I put my head right in between the two speakers, I can tell that the left speaker's not doing anything. And if you look at how I've got the sound levels set up at the moment, you can see that the right speaker's on a lot, and the left speaker's barely on at all, so... Yeah, I might just as well be listening in mono at this point. So what I want to do is just make a amplifier that takes in the stereo signal, mixes it down to mono, and then outputs it to a speaker, and then I'll do all of the rest of this in a later video. Because I've already spent, like, six minutes waffling on about this, and I've got to edit this down to... whatever. Although, when I've edited this down and taken out all my mistakes and everything, it'll probably be like five seconds long, so... yeah. Now, because I haven't done a video on this mono mixer, because I didn't really think it was worth it, I'm just going to do a little video explaining the circuit diagram, or schematic, whatever you want to call it. There's no point in doing a video about my 
mixed her over by the computer because I've already done so, so no point. So I'll just do a brief video explaining the schematic of this and then we'll get on with the main project of this video. Firstly I want to make firstly I want to point out that each of these three op amps is biased at half its supply voltage. So that's what this little circuit over here is doing. So 12 volts goes in, there's the ground, main smoothing capacitor, a couple of capacit um, resistors to form a voltage divider to basically split the voltage in half or half, another smoothing capacitor and 6 volts out. So each one of these is biased at 6 volts. So for the microphone input, there's a little bit of a boost circuit using one transistor. Although I could amplify the signal from the microphone entirely using the op amp, that can be a bit noisy, so that's why this is here. As my headset microphone keeps falling down, and then I can set the gain with this variable resistor here. Also the same goes for the two line inputs. There's no, no need to boost the signal this time. Again, just goes through an op amp, there's a potentiometer to set the gain, and then that's all mixed by these three resistors here and which goes into this final op amp, which this time is in just a non-inverting configuration. Just boost the signal by about three times and, yeah, outputs to whatever. Right, so first thing I'm gonna need is gonna need an amplifier. So I was digging around in my shed to see if I could find anything suitable, anything I could rip a chip off or anything like that. I came across this, and I thought these might be suitable chips, but when I looked it up, I found out that these are stereo chips, and they're 25 watts per channel, which really is overkill for what I need. So then I dug up this old relic, the amplifier from the Amplifier Adventure 2. I thought about taking one of those amplifier boards off and using that, but I really want to get this working again in the future, so yeah, that's just... I don't really want to rip anything else off this thing. And then I came across this little thing. It's an amplifier I made a long time ago. And this actually takes a stereo input, mixes it down to mono, and outputs to the speaker. All I've got to do is actually figure out what each of these wires do, and I should be able to use that. Which also means there is no need for a down mixing circuit. Unsaw. I don't remember how I did the circuit, but with a little bit of reverse engineering. This is the schematic. So I'll just very briefly go over how this works. So it does run on a split rail power supply. Got a couple of capacitors and resistors on the inputs of the op amps to keep their voltage input nice and smooth. Now these are all the same op amp. You know, it's a quad op amp IC, so it's got four op amps in the same chip. So these two parts take in the signal and mix it down and this part here sets the gain of the circuits and I'm gonna have to find a suitable volume con um, potentiometer for that or variable resistor whatever you want to call it and this final one feeds these two output transistors and to correct for the um, crossover distortion that feeds back into the op amp and we should get a nice clean signal out I do want to make one little change to this and I want to put a resistor in here, so like that. Maybe 100 ohms. Just to make it work a little bit better. So, I've been digging around in my shed, and I think I found a suitable donor of parts, which is this contraption. Now, this was a subwoofer of something, so, um, I know that something was supposed to snap into the front here, but I don't know what that is. Probably a phone. I say sub, if it's more of a sub yapper. And there's the actual speaker in there. But I think, you know, if I could take the amplifier out of this, reconfigure it so it's a full range speaker, it should be just fine. It's probably on a TDA 2030 or something like that, so that shouldn't be too difficult. Um, let's see what we got here. Okay, I don't like the look of this. 
This looks like a Class D affair. And that's probably got like automatic turn off if there's no sound, so yeah, um, that was a bit disappointing. Looks like a pretty good speaker though. Right, okay, let's see if this thing works. So, I've soldered on a wire on where I believe the output is. Got a couple of back-to-back -back capacitors here in series with the speaker. So if there is any DC offset, it's not going to go into that. I've used, I'm using a 33K resistor as my, well, to set the gain for this thing. I believe these two wires are the input wires. And I've got this connected up to my homemade power supply. So let's turn it on and see what blows up. Okay, well, uh, it's a little bit of action there from the speaker. Um, so I'm just going to touch one of these and see if anything happens. All right. Okay, yeah, that is a really sensitive input. Well, it's going to be because it's an op amp there, high impedance, but yeah. I think we have a winner. I'm just going to have to put a couple of wires on there and test it with an audio signal, see if it actually does amplify cleanly. And we'll see where we go from there. Okay, I think it's about time to start testing this with an audio source. So, I've added an input cable, a stereo input cable, and that's going into this potentiometer here. Both sides of the stereo are going into the same potentiometer because this is just for test purposes. The other end of the potentiometer is going to an audio source, which I'm now going to start playing, and I'm going to turn this up and let's see if we get any music out the speaker. It's working. Well, I think we have a winner here. I'm sure that won't get me any copyright strikes. I actually, oh, it actually didn't sound too bad. Now I think the next thing to do, when I can find it, of course, stick it in this thing and uh, yeah, we'll see how good that sounds. Alright, well, I've attached the amplifier in there, as you can probably see. Two extra capacitors in there, which don't really need to be in there. I was going to use those as extra capacitors to connect the amplifier to the speaker. Because, as they're going through two back-to-back 1000 -back microfarad capacitors, that's going to give me a capacitance of about 500 microfarads. Which I thought might be a little bit too low for the speaker, because that might prevent the low frequencies from coming through. But I did a little bit of calculation and I believe this is a 6 ohm speaker and with a 500 microfarad capacitor connecting that, that's gonna that's gonna roll the low frequencies off at about 50 Hertz which I'm pretty sure this speaker is never even gonna be able to get down to so that's absolutely fine. And I've had a little bit of a think about how I'm going to connect this you know so I can connect to the outside world and on this front bit here, with the resistor stuck to one of the magnets, I've got these um, connectors here, this like edge connector thing, and that connects directly to this cable here and this one here. So I've gone through with my multimeter and they seem to be directly connected to that, so there's no black magic happening in that little area there. So. This one connects directly to the black wire, this one connects directly to the brown wire, this one connects directly to the red wire, and so on all the way down. So I've been thinking, I could use these first three for the power supply, so power supply positive, power supply ground, and power supply negative. And then I guess next ones along could be used for the audio, so audio left, audio ground, and audio right. I think that would be just great. The only trouble is, I don't have a dual rail power supply that I, well, a spare dual rail power supply that I can power this from. I should really take bigger breaths before I say anything because I'm always running out of breath when I'm doing running commentary for my videos. 
Welp, here it is, ready to be put back together. I've just got to um, insulate all these exposed ends and, uh, yeah, seal up a few holes that shouldn't be there and I think we'll be good. A few minutes later. Alright, well, it's together. I've labelled what all the connections are. So I've got power supply negative, power supply ground, power supply positive, then audio in one, audio ground, and audio in two. Now I just want to make sure that I've got these right. So I've got my trusty faulty meter here, so let's see if that works. Um, it should have a very, very low resistance path between the power supply ground and the audio supply ground. Yep, that's good enough. So, I think it's about time to connect this up to a power supply and uh, an audio source and see if it actually works. Alright, well, I've connected up the power and just temporarily connected, connected up an audio source. So, I'll turn the power supply on and let's see if we've turned this whatever the hell it used to be into a monoblock amplified speaker. Well, I heard a little pop, so obviously something's going on. Let's see if this is doing anything. Yep, yeah, okay. I'll now connect that up to that tape recorder, see if we get anything out of it. I'm pressing play. Hey, it works! Of course, the speaker's rear firing, so it's not very clear at the moment. Yeah, that doesn't sound too bad, actually. So, yeah, we've got an amplified speaker. While the microphone's wire slaps on everything in this room that it can, so yes, this speaker works and it seems to work pretty well. The only trouble is, what am I going to do regarding the power supply? Until now I've been running this on my bench power supply, so I don't know what I'm going to do when I use it over by the computer. Shut up, Ricky. Alright, well, I think I've come up with a solution. So, there are now only two wires connecting this to the power supply. So, I've got positive here, zero volts here, and I'm creating a virtual ground with these capacitors and these resistors. So, I've got a resistor going from the positive to the um, you know, center point, I've got a resistor going from the negative to the center point, and also I've got capacitor going from the negative to the center point and the positive to the center point. That probably doesn't make any sense what I've just said, but um, if I could just stop bashing the camera tripod with the microphone, that would be really handy. So I'm going to turn my bench power supply on. I've got this set to about 14 volts. Okay, no loud pop, that's a good thing. Now I've got one lead of my faulty meter connected to the center point, so we should have about seven volts here. If the meter would stop auto ranging and actually measure it. Okay, 6.98, well that's close enough. And what we got at the other side negative 6.98 and again I've bashed the microphone I mean I've bashed the camera's tripod with my microphone because the pan handle's sticking right out anyway I've got this hooked up to my homemade tape recorder which is out of the shop but um just bear with me there we go oh, you can see how messy this bench really is now so I've got some music queued up in that let's just play that and see if it works
I decided to choose some Atari ST music I made because of the asymmetrical waveforms, which is going to really test to see how stable this thing is. And, well, let's see if we get anything. I think we have a winner! Yep. So, next thing I need to do is find an actual power supply that I'm going to power this with instead of just having to hook it up to my bench power supply all the time. Okay, so this is the solution that I've come up with. So, I've got my laptop power supply and I've connected that to the input. So, this is going to power this speaker. Now, I was a little bit concerned whether these um, resistors in the voltage divider would get too hot, but each of those is going to get about 10 volts, and uh, it's a, um, those are 470 ohm resistors, and they're going to be dissipating about um, 220 milliwatts, so yeah, that's, uh, that's just shy of the quarter watts that they can handle, so they might get a little bit toasty, but they should be able to handle that. Thing I am concerned about is these capacitors because I've just added these 1000 microfarad capacitors on. They are rated for 16 volts, but um, that could be a lie because I've used this brand of capacitor before at like a third of their, um, two thirds of their rated voltage, and yeah, they've heated up pretty badly, so keep an eye on that. Well, this is just the last test before it actually gets put where it's supposed to go. So yeah, I've got one of my really crappy old tapes in there with some really crappy old music that I did, so... That's not going to get me done for copyright issues, so let's see if this works. I'm just going to put the microphone right up to it. I'm Mr. Bob. And now What's this? you're about to see, or rather you're about to hear... Why Glenn in his early years, was known as the worst musician of all time. Let's hear one of his old songs. Yeah, I think I can agree with that. I think we can all agree, I suck back then. Um, here it is. In its final form. And I have just contracted yet another cold. I only got over one a few days ago and another one's come along. But it's time for this thing to take up its new place. There's one final test to make sure this is working before it goes into its new home. Just trying not to electrocute myself here. Didn't spark this time. That was disappointing. Well, let's just play my homemade tape recorder and see if it does anything. Because as I'm a teenager, I only like modern stuff. Yep, I think we can say that's working. Are we kind of um, forgotten what we're going to... Lucas and the teacher are here, and Lucas says, hey. And well, here it is. Now in use. I just want to point out something before anybody says anything. No, I'm not someone who watches Minecraft videos or gaming videos in general, but this channel has some pretty interesting stories on it, so that's why I watch it. Anyway, that's just about it. Because I've got to go and suffer another cold, so, uh, yeah. Until next time, goodbye. At you!
Hello, this is Gleb's Commodore 64 speaking. Well, what am I talking about? I'm not a C64, I am a PC. Now I'm going to tell you a secret. Gleb is in love with sticks from Sonic Boom. Yes, it's true. And they are both totally crazy. They are a perfect match. Gleb and Tad Stixie sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-D. Gleb is a creepy furry. Now I'm going to tell you about Gleb's asshole neighbor. Everything I say about him is 100% true. Especially the asshole part. Also, if Gleb's neighbor is not a tosser, then the Pope is a protestant. Gleb's neighbor is a modern person, and just like all modern people, he is stupid. Really, really stupid. And also, just like all modern people, he has no taste in music, like at all. He thinks that a thump, 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 and the one note, thump, 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 is actually music. He doesn't know that other and much better genres of music exist. No, he thinks only rap and EDM exist, and he thinks that is all the music there is, and he thinks it sounds good, which of course it doesn't. How can he even think that? Oh wait, he doesn't, he doesn't actually think that. No, he just believes his music sounds like music, which like I stated before, doesn't even qualify as music. When it comes to actual thinking, well he doesn't think anything ever, because his brain is too small. Speaking of small, his penis is also microscopic. I am surprised he can check off at all. Yes, whenever he has his music on, he checks off in time to the beat. He simply lacks the mental capacity to think of anything worthwhile to do with his life. All he can think of is drinking loud party music and checking off, and that's it. Anything else will overload his brain. So what about his job? Well, just like his dick, he doesn't have one. No, he just spends all day at the pub, and then when it closes, he comes back and on it goes. Thump, 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 thump. His music thumping away so loud that it makes all the walls shake. But he doesn't care, he doesn't care at all about other people. He doesn't care that other people might want peace and quiet. No, the only person he cares about is himself. Gleb's neighbor is a lousy, inconsiderate, disgusting, selfish, good-for-nothing, lazy, sack of shit, low-life, scumbag, waste of space, tosser, a complete bastard and a total twat who should be dragged out onto the street and shot.